Welcome, War Crim Crims, to a rather devastating realization for the start of today's episode. At some point during yesterday, between the 38 minute mark on the episode and the 41 minute mark on the episode, the bloody brain disappeared. And I'm not sure where it went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, like, walked away. I think what's most likely happened was Zheng Hao, the hellhound, most likely had a tantrum and most likely took it out on our giant brain. That means that we can no longer produce any more illithid colonists, which is obviously a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, wow, that's really annoying, actually. So, we're, we're in a situation where we can't get any more brains. I don't know how you get the illithid brains outside of, of, of starting with one. But I will do some research. If we have to go and raid the illithid factions, more than happy to do that. If we get it from a trade ship, more than happy to do that. I'm pretty sure, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing a brain in a trade ship at one point ages ago. Like an exotic goods trader. So, fingers crossed we can come across another one in the meantime. So, today, our goals... We continue with the hairy cheese production, something I've been trying to do for quite a while now. Unfortunately, our wolfalo puppy was born male, but there's things we can do to solve that problem. And I don't mean just breed another one and hope that it's female. This this guy is going to come in very handy. Oh dear, that was a terrible fucking choice of words. Let me clarify. We're going to we're going to make it female. Uh, and then and then milk it the way you normally milk livestock. We're not going to milk the Again, it's a bad choice of words. Uh, secondly, we are going co to continue on with the mighty prison tournament for round two of our first prison bracket. The uh, the losers, of course, have been relegated into their bio contenders. I didn't talk about this yesterday, but I had to build some other ones because these guys... There's actually a, a weight limit. I had to go and look it up on the Steam forum, actually. There's a weight limit on the uh, bioreactors themselves, and it turns out that the thingy and thingy here, uh, James and Gravy... <laughs> That's not like a fucking comedy double act. James and Gravy, unfortunately, were too heavy because of all their extra limbs that they've got. This man's a bear. This person's got a load of spikes. They couldn't actually fit in the regular ones, whereas these ones are fine for goblins. And regular humans are mutated and, and dwarfs are, are okay for those. Um, but for everything else, for any mutant creatures like a Furco, for example, our deer man, um, or, or any orc end up being relegated, those will have to go in the big bioreactors. We have a prison break right now, speaking of prison, so we're going to have to tidy this up very quickly, but we've got plenty of uh, plenty of turrets which should be able to tidy them up relatively quickly. Who's actually escaping? Oh, so it's not everybody. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can manage 9. What I'm going to do is pull our people back to about here. I'm going to send Robo Mummy in with the anesthetic, and we're going to hold these doors open to try and encourage them to run that way into more taser turrets. That way, hopefully, the taser turrets will put them down before this gets out of control. In fact, the taser turrets inside the prison might end this before it... Oh, Frog's in there. Frog and Lassie, the prison wardens. Okay, get in there and start putting these people down. Just be careful we don't over-tase them here. Okay, Lassie's done a good job there. Oh, my God. Frog is, is annihilating them. Prison break over, my man. Holy shit. I was kind of worrying that he was a bit of a waste of a corpse, but my god, look at this. He's single-handedly dealt with the ones in the freezer. Hang on a minute. We've got an elder brain. Did I accidentally deconstruct it? <laughs> Maybe when it's destroyed, it drops an elder brain in case of situations like that. We've quite clearly got a spare one. Maybe I should learn my lesson and put this somewhere much safer, like all the way back here. I'm actually not against that at all. Put it in the storage room. Because I'm a little bit concerned about keeping it in the middle there. Okay, let's let's also build it out of like um, something a bit more durable. What about like uranium? What does that give it? 250 hit points, bollocks. What about what does steel give it? 100. Oh my god. Uh, if we got 180 plus steel, that would be a different different story. Jade? What does that give it? 50. Oh wow. Uh, granite. Granite's quite tough. 170. You know what? Sorry, I'm just gonna build it out of uranium. We'll put it out of uranium. We'll put it right the way back here, and I'll put another wall around it just to keep it as safe as as houses. I, I'm not risking this thing being destroyed again. Get this thing back on as soon as possible because the research it provides is so, so good. So is that ticking back up now? Doesn't. Oh, yeah, I think it is. It's going quite slowly. Um, it's like it's set to research. Okay, we'll just give it a little bit of time then, see how it, see how it ends up. So the other thing I want to go for is the... Um, what's his sex reassignment? Right, so we can use these. It's going to take a lot of research. 
we can use these on the the wolf muffalo so that we can milk it. So that works fine. Now, more importantly, we can think outside the box here. And thank you to the people in Discord who pointed this out. We could hit the, the prisoners with it. Uh, if we need more people for our for our restaurant over here, at the maternity ward, you know, where we're, where we're getting recruits for our restaurant, so to speak. See, I'm not going to start working on the restaurant quite yet because we haven't got any stock for it. But the second we've dealt with that, we can start getting guests in here, set up ourselves a little hotel. It's going to be great. Now, the other thing I didn't know, and again, thank you to the comments for this, was that if you don't cure the Scarrier, these things remain Manhunter. Now, we've had it before where... I'm not entirely sure how it happened. Um, we, we've had it before where they've had Scarrier but not actually been a Manhunter. So I don't know what would cause that, whether like a psychic... Some sort of psychic ability could do it. Anyway, um, these guys need curing, but we don't have any medicine to do it with. Now, I'm very tempted just to, just to kill them dead. To be honest with you. They're quite cool and they're a little bit weird. But I don't know... I don't know quite if this is the right way to go about it. Because whenever our people walk through, they're just immediately shooting them down. And then we're having to patch them up again. We have a little bit of medicine coming in quite soon. So we've only got to hold out for another day or so. We might be able to get them patched up and get some incubators installed. Given that we're waiting for research and given that we're waiting for... Uh, things to grow, medicine and whatnot. I think it's time to continue with the tournament arc. So for those of you not interested in the tournament arc, I'll put up some timestamps so you can skip over tournament-based content. If those war crimes, for whatever reason, aren't to your fancy, you can avoid them. So at the end of yesterday, progressing into round two, we have Lone, Rodaballo, Rugzag, Zarek, Crodorok, Furco, and Klel with Apicos right at the top there, having been put in that bracket just by purely random chance because we had an odd number so same with dad dad at the bottom of the second bracket so the first round is going to be apokos versus loan loan a fan favorite from yesterday of course succeeding in the first round of the tournament ready to face new challenger apokos never before in combat loan already somewhat damaged now in the interest of of pure fairness here we are going to allow whatever happens to happen if the people come in injured if the people come in with mutations We've got to let it be. The tournament cannot stop. Christian, the KO Dino, interrupting the scene with his mad dash for fish, perhaps distracting Lone, knocking her out of the combat very early on there. Apokos, the victor, however, bleeding out in 11 hours. Could have some horrible side effects here. Lots of speculation going into the next round of Rodaballo versus Rugzag, two returning champions from yesterday's tournament. We do have a Muffalo on the pitch. If they could... Please be ejected from the arena. That would probably be way more convenient for combat. And they're off. Cow versus Orc. Man versus Beast. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. Whoa, who is who? Rugzag. Unstoppable Rugzag. Drops Rodaballo before the fight can even begin there. Two contestants yesterday who were highly controversial in their fights. My God. <laughs> no time to even introduce them. Crodorok, the Plate Helmet Crusader, defeated the War Mask Warrior in yesterday's fight. And Zarek, of course, the Cape Goblin, who defeated his brother and friend. It was all over in a single punch. A knockout blow there from Crodorok. Zarek, disgraced. Absolutely disgraced. I don't believe it. Zarek has taken the loss massively badly. Unbelievable. Attacking Worm Turner, who was there to escort him out of the arena. Never seen before. Just terrible sportsmanship. And my friends, it is time for the final fight of the bracket for this evening. We have the most anticipated fight perhaps we will ever have in the entire tournament. When I asked yesterday, who are you guys going to vote on? One name appeared more than the others. Clell, the undefeated, the uninjured, the unscathed, and the unstoppable goblin who yesterday did not take a single punch during his first fight fighting furco the deer man who overcame all odds and defeated his orc opponent this is going to be one hell of a fight and they are off Klel versus furco equally training blows there off the side of things squad neve both on the side of team Klel, both dealing damage and furco coming out on top that is a massive upset for the for the prison that is a massive upset for the prison. Furco yesterday was was not very well liked following his fight using some very unconventional, unorthodox, and what a lot of people described as scummy tactics to take advantage of his opponent. Klel downed. Kel, the unstoppable, the untouchable, has been stopped. And my friends, he has been thoroughly touched. 
Oh dear. <laughs> that leaves us with the final results of today. Going into round three, the demi semi finals, we have Apokos versus Rogzag for a chance in the semi finals, and Crudorok and Furco fighting for their chance in the semi finals. Apokos, the new guy, versus Rogzag, the mighty orc warrior, and Crudorok, the plate helmet, versus Furco the deer. Who will make it through into the final of this bracket, of course, into the semi-finals, ready to face in the true finals of the tournament, the winner of the entire other bracket, of which we have had absolutely no fight so far. Gripping stuff here, people. But the first war crime on the menu today is going to be genetic manipulation. Poor Zuck has been... Well, I say poor Zuck. Incredible Zuck has been given an extra dexterous arm, giving him the 50% manipulation there and... Minus 5% of the melee cooldown, so it gets the 100% manipulation if you install it as an extra body part, because it, obviously, I mean, it's an extra body part. Of course, you get double manipulation, but that's still very, very, very powerful, especially for our head crafter. We could try growing another one, but I don't know that we've really got the, um, no ingredients available, only checked every few seconds. Ah, there we are. That's it. It's reset now. Incredible. Right, let's get you filling the organ vat then. Actually, would it be worth reinstalling it down to here? What can we do about these bloody KMLs? Because we don't have the medicine still, as far as I know. Um, not ready for surgery. We could move it into a bloody bioreactor, too. I imagine those things would make a lot of... Uh, I imagine they would have a lot of power produced, right? This one is a literal war crime. Uh, and that is chemical weapons. We've got steel flame turrets going down. Um, and I think flame throwers are still banned in war, aren't they? So there you go. That's that's an actual legitimate real world war crime, and we can all be very very proud of that, and not at all ashamed. I figured the the the, the reason we put that down is that way. If the who's held the door open on the prison? No, no, no. That way, if the prisoners escape, they get torched. Uh, and and to be honest, flame damage is repairable. A bullet, not really so much, depending on how fast they 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 die from that. Uh, then we got taser turrets. So if they manage to get past the flamethrowers. A little extra tasering will, will probably knock them down at that point. So I've I've put the um, sandbags around the rest of that too, just so they're defended. But that's a fairly alright place to keep the turrets, I think. It's kind of equidistant. Uh, say they're down here fishing and decide to go on a bit of a riot. That can hit them down there. Um, well, obviously not all the way down there. But it's got the front door covered still quite nicely. And the work area. You know what? I think it's time we upgrade Zheng Hao. They've been with us for so long. I think I think we can upgrade them. And I did say we'd try and upgrade one person per per episode, you know, to keep a little bit of the uh, the kind of internal difficulty up, having to deal with feeding a whole new person. But they are just kind of hanging around. They're essentially colony member anyway, but they're just in they're just in dog form. I think they deserve to be upgraded. Hey, hello everyone to PG Tips. I haven't actually looked at their stats yet. We've got a couple of firefighting. That's quite annoying. Oh, but they're not pyromaniac. They're just oh age one. Well, that's different. They haven't got an adulthood uh, backstory yet. That's bizarre. Great memory, jealous, kind, eight medical, three artistic, three mining with a single passion. They're pretty bad. I won't lie. They're pretty terrible. We could train them up to be an artist, though, because we don't have a colony artist right now. Uh, and, of course, father is Lassie and brother of Worm Turner. Of course, uh, they were Zheng Hao and, and Worm Turner was Cambo, now converted into more... Hideous, hideous squid people. I'm sure we've got some spare armor for you. Flat vest and, uh, and a nice helmet there to kick things off. Another mutinite meteorite. Wow. Um, again, we could build another one of these if we if we really want to. Have them do a loop round. <laughs> That's fucked. I love it. Okay. Um, so we'll have them go up here, I guess, and then and then connect up with it with it there. Sure. And then if we just dig that out too, and then force them to run all the way back around. So if we build the wall back down to here, I think we finally cracked the code to the new Tramian. Outside of the incubators, which are fun and all, but but take a lot of effort and, and take a lot of time. And obviously, you have to manually extract them using medicine. So right now we've got the ability to extract new Tramian from uh, nutrient solution and protein mash, both of which we're making from maggots. And I can't remember what the other thing we set up was, but it was hilarious. Uh, actually, no, we're making one from maggots, one from corpses, right? Either way, that's now being turned into Neutramine, which we can now use to fuel all of our experiments. As a result, because we have a reliable way to make Neutramine, we have a reliable way to make medicine. And because we have a reliable way to make medicine, we have a reliable way to make people be born. 
I think it's time we start working on the restaurant. Oh, speak of the devil. Hala has another new training growth for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where's that? In the left leg. Neutro aiming. Left leg. Uh, let's get Kekvet on that, seeing as we're trying to train her medical skill. So you go on that one. Robo Mummy, I need you to finish building this thing so our people don't... Oh, shit. So our people don't keep mutating. But as with all good secret cannibal hotels, I'm going to build out a bone, and hopefully we're going to make the floors out of human leather. It really does depend how much we can we can get together on that. Uh, hang on. This blood soil, is it permanent? 175% fertility. What's rich soil? 120? 140? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. How much of this stuff have we got? 72, because I think we're limited to 72. Oh, or I've limited it to 72, I should say. Oh, well, shit. Uh, if we get some sort of indoor hydroponics bit, can we place that anywhere? Is it? Is it just... Ah, oh, shit. Uh, ah, terrain that sports growable. Damn, I was going to say, that'd be awesome. Um, we could turn this into an indoor hydroponics bay, though. If we just put a roof over the fucking thing. There's also a... Oh, what happened to my bloody geothermal generator? You people need to calm the hell down. Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins with relationships to Crodorock and Clell. They've heard of the tournament, my friends, and they are not pleased about it. Nobody shuts down my damn tournaments. Right, let's get in there. It, again, it's, it's friendly, 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 nice, fun, haha -ha times. Right, okay. Uh... Shit, we could do with some guns here, fella. Right, you grab that flintlock pistol. Uh, Kegvitz lost a bullpup rifle, which is never inspiring. Is it in the stockpile somewhere? Not that I can see. Oh, for shit's sake. Oh my god, we're also in the middle of growing another arm. 1.8 days remaining. Oh god, okay, well let's get this tidied up as much as possible. How long, what have we got on there? 7866. Shit, I meant to reinstall this before I started that, didn't I? Oh, there's your rifle. Good, 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 good. Okay, right. Squad up. Get down here. I think we're going to try and cut them off because I have a feeling they're just going to dig through my my fancy meteorite trap again. Yep, that's quite literally exactly what they're doing. They are mutating though, which is quite nice. Means that they're going to be, at least for a little while, unadapted to their new limbs that we've just so graciously gifted them. Now I've just got to hope our people can actually bloody hit them in the first place. Right, give them hell, boys. That's not good. They're already, they're already pressing the advantage quite significantly. Careful, careful, careful. Watch out for friendly fire. That's a lot of goblins. Let's turn off these bloody sniper turrets before they take out our own people as well. Be careful. For the love of God, be careful with that. Especially that explosive. I'm a little bit concerned about Zuck, to be honest with you. Cave, it's already been hit. What have you been hit by? Oh, no, no, no. That's just damage from before. Sorry, my bad. Okay. That's one group fleeing. How many groups have we got? One group there, one group there, one group there. Okay, so we've got three groups in total. These guys did decide to come through the meteor, which I'm very pleased to hear. Because it means I haven't just wasted... Days and days and days setting this shit up. Okay. Nice shot there. I hate the fact they can walk off an explosive and sustain weapon fire like that. These people are too strong. <laughs> and again, same story. Look at them go. These hobgoblins are ridiculous. Great fighters for the arena, though. And great experiment subjects. Great volunteers for my medical trials. If, uh, you can't burn my meteor down. Okay, well, these guys, we've got quite quite the drop on. So this should be okay. Is that good enough on the distance front? That's basically the best I can do and actually be able to hit them, though. Shit. Okay, come forward a little bit. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, they're already getting a bit too close for comfort. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Watch out for the friendly fire. Oh, this is doing me a frighten, brother. This is doing me a frighten. Come on, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Rubber kid, rubber kid, rubber kid, rubber kid. Rubber kid's gonna get peppered by our gunfire if we're not careful. Shit. I, c I can't stop them firing. Please be careful with that bloody explosive. Okay, how's he doing? Six hours. Shit. Okay, Robo Mummy, rescue him. I'm sure the others can be trusted. <laughs> I say without a modicum. A modicum of confidence. Are all three groups dealt with now? Are we safe? Are we finally safe? Okay, we're fine. I I'm sorry, I thought it was another group still coming up, but no, we're actually all right. Well, that was a a mess. I I know I keep saying okay, the foggy weather is quite fun for the for the hotel, but the fact that we're struggling to deal with medieval goblins is a bit concerning when we're wearing power armor with charge weaponry, and they're mostly unarmored. And even when they're armored, it's what bloody plate mail. I'm I'm a little bit little bit frightened about that front. What? Upon becoming a morph, Karzak gained primal mutations. Why have you? 
Why do they keep eating the friggin' chuck morph eggs? This is this is gonna get difficult to manage. Karzak, were you in the tournament bracket? Because your opponent is gonna have a pretty easy friggin' fight, my friend. Karzak was supposed to fight Rag. You fine. Beard on your head. You wanna eat a chuck morph egg? You wanna become a chicken? You gotta fight in the tournament? That's your problem. I'm not pulling you out. I'm not disqualifying you. You you are gonna have to fight. One medicine. Oh, that's uh, very cheap. That's very. This is also very much a war crime. Forced reassignment is just about as as war crime as we can get. Alters the patient's biological sex. Oh my god, not as biological. I don't even know what that means. That's a technical science term, I guess. I just heard clocking. I think someone's killed and eaten. The the chicken. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, unless I am being a bit blind here, I think... What are you cooking? Oh! Oh, that's the level we've got to. You, you guys aren't... Oh, you're Gith. You're Hobgoblin. You're not bothered by this. You're not bothered... You're not bothered... Are you bothered by this? Needs? Doesn't give a fuck. That's actually the best thing I've ever seen. Oh, what happened? Karzak. Went berserk, I assume. Oh, and then, of course, got tased by a tasing turret in, in, intended for humans when in fact they are a chicken. That makes a lot of sense. Damn it. Well, now you are disqualified from the tournament on account of being dead. Oh, shit. Well, I guess that's a, a free round for whoever you were supposed to fight. I'd just like to say for the record, this colony is pure, pure chaos. This is chaos. Like a lot of, a lot of series, it's, it's, it's manageable, but still kind of chaos when we're doing weird things. This is pure chaos because all of our people spend most of their time undoing the fucking shit that's going on in the prison. And on top of that, we have to deal with all the farms and we've only got really one good skilled colonist, that being Zuck and of course Robo Mummy. She's only really good at medical and shooting as well, I'd like to point out. It's chaos. It is just madness because we don't even have the luxury of recruiting good people when they turn up because whenever we put a tadpole in their head, it's purely random. And now you've got chemical damage. Oh, from your new training incubator. Uh, this man's in here. Why? I don't even know. Get him out of here. Good news, everyone. After a slight stumble, maybe literally, uh, which ended up in uh, Dr. Dr. Ketvik cutting off the wrong body part. Bear in mind, we were going for a, for a reassignment there. We have now got ourselves a female wolfalo, which I've got Robo Mummy preparing to administer age pills to in order to... What happened to your suit of armor? You're wearing a dress again. Well, oh, shit. Administer age pills in order to allow it to begin producing milk and wool. There we are. And that's what we're going to hit the uh, the children with as well when they're eventually born. That's not a child. I mean, technically it is, but it's not the type of child that we want. Is it refrigerated? Oh, not refrigerated. I thought they were in a room that was quality that cold. Uh, impergonante. Impergonante. Right, so let's get one of those thrown in. Let's get one of those thrown in. Did that other arm grow? It bloody did as well. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Zuck, I think you deserve the upgrade. I really want to give it- I, I want to give Robo the upgrade. How are we doing on the doctoring front? PG Tips is getting close. Shit. We need 10 medical skill, don't we? And even then, I probably wouldn't trust them to do it. I think we're going to have to accept Robo Mummy's quite unlikely to be upgraded anytime soon. Let's reinstall this into here for a start. Um, we'll have kind of a row of them set up somewhere. Let's remove those so animals aren't going in. The problem is, to build our hotel, we need human leather. And we need a lot of human leather. And all the raiders we've had today have been non-human. There's a very simple solution to this. Uh, it's, it's not the nicest solution, but it is absolutely categorically war crimes. You couldn't define it as anything but war crimes. And that's building a bunch of artillery and killing all the, all the non-humans on the planet. Which we can do. It takes something like 50 shells to wipe out a settlement. So we could just go in with, with our high level armor, build some better weapons too, and just kind of wipe them out. Um, have we, we've got charge weapons. Have we got charge weapons researched? Yeah, we do. We can't do any better than that. Unless, uh, unless one of these mods had some crazy, crazy guns that I don't know of. Um, laser targeting systems? No, that's just for uh, rocket launchers, isn't it? Like anti-mech launchers. Um, that's actually it. Okay, well, let's get down some better rifles, I think. Um, let's go for, like, charge LMGs or something something along those lines. The armor is, is really helpful, don't get me wrong, but I would prefer something... 
Something to actually allow us to do a bit more damage when we actually do hit. Because obviously, I, I want to go and clear out, to be honest with you, the um, the foggy rain to start off with. And then I think I want to get a load of drop pods and maybe go and... Actually, I think I saw a reusable drop pod. Go and wipe out some, uh, some really basic kind of uh, medieval era settlements. Here I'm going mad. I could have sworn we had a... A transport pod that was reusable, but I guess not. I, th I think I saw it in the research tree somewhere, but God knows where I saw it. It was called like advanced transport pod? No, evidently not. Fuck knows. Okay, well, I I'm, I'm pretty sure there was. If anybody's playing this mod pack and, and you've seen something similar, please let me know. We'll get down regular transport pods then. We'll send five people over. Um, again, I don't want to leave the base too undefended here. I've got to turn those back on. So as I've talked about before, Robo Mummy is the only one who can really take full advantage of the extra dexterous arms because the squids don't have the lower shoulder heat if that's needed to install the arms on. So she can have all four pairs. No, all two pairs of four arms. So what I've done here is I've used the War Crimes 2 mod to queue up some practice surgery on, on, our, on our volunteers. So that we can hopefully try and keep it up as soon as possible. 8.87 with a single passion really shouldn't take too long. Apparently, though, we have no freaking medicine. We never have medicine. Where does all this medicine keep going? I've got one, two, three. Oh, hello. What the hell? Hello. Um, I've got six irrigators growing medicine. I've got a big bloody field of medicine there. Who is using all the medicine? We're really filling the turrets with it, I guess. But no, where is it going? I feel like we're, we're, we're using it to... To be ground up in, in one of the, you know, like, I've, I feel like I've set up a weird bill somewhere where I'm, I'm pulling it apart. And Lee has to lie there and watch, knowing that this is going to happen to her as well. Poor chicken Lee. This is insane. This is, this is uh, truly the heights of depravity. Surgery failed. But medical level 9, though. Hello. And then you get experience from also patching them up after you butcher them. Oh, this is good. I mean, obviously not for them, but this is great for us. We actually might be able to get Robo Mummy leveled up. Okay, you need material. Why? Uh, we've got material. It's, it's right there. You, oh, right, because it was reserved. Hang on. Okay, for it. let's get back to work, my friend. Oh, this is so good. 10.9. That was actually enough. Wow, incredible. Okay, so Robo Mummy can have the next arm then. So I'm going to actually bother to start filling this now. Oh, that is reserved by Neve. Neve's is already on it. Well, and welcome back with Protein Mash. Look at that. They beat me to it. Could be dangerous. So we have to be very, very careful that we're not... Morph Silk Pants. That's vile. That we're not pushing this too far. The last thing we want to do is kill them. What the hell did you do there? Everything. A cracked spine, a crushed liver, a cut lower back. A stabbed in the abdominal... Ow, my abdominal cavity. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, let's queue up this then. Uh, this is all possible, by the way, thanks to our medicine production coming from the Neutramium production. So it's all starting to really come together now. The, first, the last couple of episodes of researching and balancing and building and doing crap like this too. It's really, really, really starting to help out. What are we growing the Devil Strand for again? Remind me. Because I can't remember for the life of me. We've got another bloody arm there. Hello. Okay. What happened with this one? What are we, what are we filling it for? Oh, it, it's actually just growing. 3.9 days. Oh, I might put down another vat, because that's going to take a bloody long time otherwise. 35 silver, which we don't have. Ah, that's why we're not getting any new resources. The bloody quarries ran out. Shit. Um. Right, that's, uh, that's quite a sizable problem, isn't it? Because now we're going to have to either hollow into the mountain. I guess we can hollow in up here and install another one. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. That's a real shame. I was wondering why suddenly our plastic are completely dried up. So we're making, obviously, the heavy marine armor for everybody. We've only really got two more sets to go before people are decently protected. Our worst armor, then, is recon armor, which is, even then, pretty all right. To be fair, what we can do is we can reclaim this soil, put down that blood soil, and reinstall this sun lamp up here. Because, obviously, this is all under a mountain, right? But that way, we can get a bit more farmland out of it and maybe have them growing even more medicine. Because, again, medicine doesn't seem to last long. But, look, again, we've still got, we've got four more being churned out there, too. So that should be enough to have the other one that's not pregnant impregnated. There we are. And boom. Very nice. Ah! Oh! What? Oh, of course you are. What am I doing? What a waste of medicine. I completely forgot that this person hadn't... Well, that's my bad. I, I've also got the age drugs being brought down in here as well. So that obviously when the child is born, we can fit it some age drugs. And then we can put it straight on the chopping block. Holy shit, we've actually done it. Oh, that's vile. This milk seems to be filled with strands of grey wool. Disgusting and quite hard to drink. 
So now we fill the cheese press with the the hairy milk, and then we got ourselves some tasty hairy cheese. Uh, how does this work then? Filled at 10 out of 50. So we need 50. Oh shit, we need 50 milk to actually to actually kickstart that. In that case, let's impregnate the the wolf again. Um, no, 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 we don't want to do that. In no, no, no. Uh, impreg. Artificially impregnate. We'll get the wolf in, in, impregnant. Wait for the new one to be born. Feed it the age pill. Rinse and repeat. And then obviously flip it over to female if that's necessary. Hindsight, really what we should do, and this is going to be very cursed. Really what we should do is any children that are born, feed them the age pills and flip them over to female no matter what. Use them for more breeding stock. Y yeah? <laughs> the artillery is ready with the 12 shells as well. So tomorrow we can start shelling defenseless helpless tribes across this globe in order to make it so we've got enough humans to be able to pull their skin off and build the floor of our hotel out of it. The prisoner's back in the quarry, so that should help out with our resource production. Should mean that we can... Oh, no. Oh, God, I thought about sending a, a bloody raid as a final thing against for today. But we will leave it there because I think the war crimes today have honestly been very sufficient. And right now, we're just kind of waiting on some plastic to be generated, waiting on, you know, people to give birth and things to grow. So... This is a good time, I think, to, to tidy things up. But, but good war crimes today. You know, we've got chemical weapons down. We've committed all sorts of fleshy monstrosities. Poor Wolfalo uh, was, was flipped to female and then impregnated and also milked. We've had humans being born and immediately be tasered within the first week of life. <laughs> the tournament. Man, there's been a lot. And of course, the extra dextrous arm going into Zuck as well. This is good. I'm going to have to think of ways to start up in the ante a little bit, I think, because we've got things like, obviously, the crucifixes we can build, which is pretty fun. Um, we've got things like the, the actual head mod, which we haven't really touched much on, um, it, where we can chop off people's heads and put them on spikes. More importantly, launch them at enemies. That'd be quite fun to test that one out. There's so much stuff to actually still look at, but it's quite overwhelming trying to juggle the amount of crap we've got to juggle right now, which is why I put so many of them obviously into bioreactors there, so it's less to worry about. Thank you guys all for watching. The new Patreon lists are not yet available because I'm still waiting on people to get back to me about about names and whatnot, basically. So I'll put up a post on Patreon and and try and get that all sorted. Obviously, I'm recording this a few hours before the video goes live, so um, I should have that all sorted, ready for tomorrow. But you should know about that before this video goes live. So go and check that out if you haven't already, and we'll make sure we get a new end card kind of scrounged up and ready to go. I leave you with the nice music instead. Feels weird not having to read out a list of names.